Welcome to Tech on Tap. My name is Adam Herman. This is a technology showcase where each week we're going to bring in new industry experts to help solve problems. We're going to be using real life situations, lessons learned, and looking at what's new in the industry. Here's the recipe to the series. Each week we're going to be bringing in one technology expert to talk about tech, and we're going to be bringing in one beer to rate for you. Today I'm going to have Mike Decker as my special guest talking about intelligent document processing, what it is, and going through a few use cases. I'm excited today to introduce my guest from Denver, Mike Decker. Thanks, Adam. Mike Decker. Uh, I work with all the advanced technology at DataBank related to AI and large language model technology. Well, we're on to our beer rating for today's episode. Mike, since this is your first time on the show, each episode of Tech on Tap, we get a new beer, we rate the beer, scale from one to 10. Today's beer was actually selected by myself since you had a flight in. I uh, picked a beer from Toppling the Goliath out of Decorah, Iowa. Um, this is a beer I have not had before. So this is the Cage's Castle, and this is a dip on a double IPA. It smells hoppy. It is. If you want to go ahead and give the beer a try, and you want to let me know what you think, Five high, one low. Five high, one low. What do you think? I'd say about a three five, three point five four. This is a stronger tasting beer. I didn't even look at what that was. Yeah, it's got some kickback to it. Yeah, I like it though. So this is more of my my type of a beer. So if I had to give this one a rating, just because you, you've got that alcoholy beer taste going on there, I'd probably give it like a four and a half. Okay. Yeah, I'll stick with like three five. So our overall rating then, splitting in the difference, we'll give it a four for today. So thanks for rating beers with us. Cool. So Mike, talking to IDP, what is the real problem? People have data coming in from everywhere. Yeah. They have limited index values, they have li limited data. Explain to me what the biggest issue you're seeing. Well, there's data trapped on a bunch of different documents from a bunch of different sources, right? You know, it's not just the paper that was in the box. Um, it's also your email. Oftentimes it's faxes. It's SFTP transfers a large volume. It's e-form submissions from your clients, right? It's being able to take all of those channels of input and turn them into the result that you want, right? Yeah. And I did see one, one project that we had. We actually brought it in, indexed it into an ECM solution popped it back out, ran it through IDP and put it back. Mm -hmm. Why would we do that? Because we needed more information, right? So you're saying we can go clean up ECM solutions with IDP? We can, we can and we, we, we do because IDP is more than just extracting stuff and doing that. It's a convergence of the dev teams that work, you know, in our business, right? It's a, it's a convergence of the, the solution engineers that may deliver some of those systems. We're all working together to embed that technology in a way to enable even legacy systems to enjoy the, the technology in the future. That got me pretty excited thinking about it right now. No one's limited to the data they have. Correct. As long as they, they look to leverage the right IDP solutions. Correct. It's yep. awesome. Today's episode is gonna be on IDP or intelligent document processing. Uh, that means different things to other people. Um, you know, there's different ways of looking at it. Today, Mike, talking to you, you know, I'd really like to get your take on, you know, a high level explanation of what IDP is. What is intelligent document processing? Well, intelligent document processing is document processing with the word intelligent in front of it, frankly. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's a mesh of today's technology with the stuff that many of us have been doing for, for years, if not decades. So are you talking about the legacy like OCR type? Optical character recognition of, you know, pages going back to the 80s, I believe, right? Yeah. And back when microfilm was prevalent and all of that, it's taking that technology and it's merging it with the advances that we've made recently in natural language processing, right? Which is key. It's the conversational way that we talk to AI systems like large language models. That's, in a nutshell, what IDP is. Yeah. So would you say that IDP is bringing multiple solutions together to develop the outcome that you're looking for? It's all about the outcome, 
right? So it is a mesh of all of those technologies, the new and the old, to creating that desired outcome. That's absolutely right. Well, as we start to talk about, you know, IDP, you'll hear words like AI, machine learning. Uh, you know, w when we're developing solutions that are going out, are these solutions that are just plug and play? Do they learn on their own? Do they got to be taught? These are some of the core questions I'm hearing sure. as I'm talking to other industry, uh, you know, customers, employees. Sure, sure. So it's you know, there, it's it's a uh, it's a messy field of messaging for sure. Um, most of the tools that I work with, you have you've got to have some involvement with. It's not something that you set up and and get to just run forever on its own without any any guidance, right? We're not there yet with artificial intelligence. It's not thinking like humans are. So while you can take those tools and run them unattended, you're not going to appreciate the results you get out of it. Completely understood. Nothing's easy that ends well, right? Right. So is it safe to say that if you're deploying an IDP solution of any kind, it's going to be incremental improvements to get where you want to go? Correct. And we have to look in our past at what we once called the, the beacon of a successful project just related to document processing, which was often thought of as accuracy, right? Am I 99% accurate? Well, you know, you should think about the concept of what's good enough with your data. What do you need to do with that data? Do you need 100%? Because that's it. That's obscenely expensive and obscenely costly from a time perspective. I'm glad you went to that point right away. So understanding confidence ratings of what you want for an ROI, right? So what key fields need to be accurate? 100%, 90%, you know, which ones don't? You know, our technologies allow us to take index values, right? Folder level. I mean, we can do tons of different ways to find it. Summer, summaries of things, right? Give me the key value pairs on this document. Give me the business relevance, all of those things, right? So as we've been deploying IDP solutions for the last couple of years here, what, what is the biggest uh, educational piece that you've had to reiterate to customers, to peers? I would say that, so again, what are some of the biggest misconceptions? Is that's, that what you're really after? Yeah. So I would say probably some of the bis biggest misconceptions are that with just a high level set of requirements, I can take a tool with a vendor and get to my ultimate goal within a matter of weeks or a few months, right? The truth about IDP is it's a little bit of a custom manufacturing process. And the looser you are with your definition of what you want in the beginning, the harder it is to get quickly to, to your end result, right? That's what I've seen more often than not. That's where I've seen projects fail is with a lack, lack of a good definition of what the outcome is you're after. What, uh, what I've seen too on top of that, and I was trying to kind of pair that up, mm -hmm. tell me which technology you're going to use. Right out of the gate. We haven't even looked at the problem, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I want to use four different options, right? I want to figure out which one's the best one to use. And until we've actually seen the problem, we've seen the data, we've seen what they're trying to accomplish, giving that solution, isn't going to work right in two decades of working with documents i can tell you that um there's almost no chance of success just marching into something from a high level and trying to use all the tools yeah. right and again the better you define the problem you're trying to solve the better the outcomes you're going to get how fast can an idp solution be deployed and be running if we know what we're doing uh you know i've seen summary and uh, key value pair extraction systems be able to be set up in a matter of a few hours. Or if you're familiar with the term prompt engineering, if you know how to have a conversation with a large language model, in that context, you can get that going in a very rapid amount of time. If, how often are we seeing that though? Not very often. It's new, right? It's very, very new. There are some interesting applications in uh, correspondence where mail rooms are dealing with large volumes of incoming stuff. They need to know what it is, what they need to do with it, but it's still relatively new. So when you take a more scientific approach with tools that look for patterns and use the natural language and some of the AI tech, you're probably looking at a few months realistically. And even then you're going to incrementally go back and train it over time, right? Because it's always going to see something new. So this does this is one of the things I was trying to make sure we talked about. 
understanding, you know, an IDP solution is not an overnight thing. It's not. It's an investment in time and money. Yep. But the outcomes can be great. Yep. So I appreciate that. Uh, part of today's Tech on Tap segment, we're going to be going through a use case, right? Yep. I, I talked to Mike about a regional, regional medical center project that we put out. Uh, Mike, do you want to talk just a little bit about the technology behind the solution, and then we'll talk about how we got there? Yeah, sure. So uh, it's a it's a cloud based, uh, uh, basically consumable service that you uh, that you take. You know, we had this client. You want me to you want me to start with kind of the problem oh, yeah. that they were dealing with? So this client had a bunch of medical records, and they had been a victim of a ransomware attack and basically all of their images got uncoupled from all of their organized data, right? So here they were with millions of pages of files and no real understanding of everything that was in there, right? Down to the level that they needed it to be. So uh, we took an approach with a tool to take their kind of taxonomy of document types and sift through something like six or eight million pages of files and identify each page as to what it's one of 600 doc types were, right? That was step one. Step two was then to extract some value in the most recent date on each one of those pages that usually equated to a data service and the patient name. And I believe maybe a, an account number or an MRN, right? That's basically it. Classification and basically three key value pairing structures. So we try to keep the solution pretty simple. We did. We did. We 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 had a compressed time frame, right? Because you know, we started with the the old the old faithful, right? The standard all human hands on deck, right? So in this use case, I find it really intriguing because we wanted to get a jump on it, mm -hmm. from what I remember, and we wanted to get a jump on it before the technology was built. Correct. We put six months into this project. I think we had 3% of the project completed in six months. Mike, do you have a ballpark of how many humans we had full-time on this? I think it was 25 or 30, something in that neighborhood, so times six months. Yeah, 25 right? or 30. And for 3%. For 3%. Right? Okay. It's so Remarkable we're, in the wrong direction. It is, but again, 3% was still better than nothing for this customer that had urgency. Yeah. Right? Correct. It needed to show something. Once we started rolling out the IDP solution, that we, that we picked, the cloud-based one. How fast did we see incremental improvements? So we did, we did a testing phase, you know, that, that was, that was uh, in that particular time, you know, probably two to four weeks of, hey, how's the model doing, right? Is it classifying with any reasonable, reasonableness? Once we verified that, we knew we kind of had a mold that we could bring into production. So we dropped that into production and I believe we skinnied that team down of uh, reviewers that were reviewing what the AI was doing, and it was it was it was pretty amazing. It was it was within the high 80s to low 90s from an accurate accuracy percent you know percentage rate. So for a high volume use case coming through, mm -hmm. we were able to get 80 90 percent of that done. That that's hundreds of thousands of documents passing through. With yeah, that. and 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 still the, those six people still looked at a high volume of pages, but. Um, it went much faster than our original approach, right? Once we got in there and started implementing the IDP piece, how fast did we finish? You know, it's a little fuzzy. I have trouble remembering last week. This was, you know, a year or so ago. So I think if my memory serves, it was somewhere in the three to five month time frame. Yeah. So from deployment, I think it was right around that five month yeah. mark. So in six months with 25, 30 people, 3%. Yep. In five to six months, 97% with how many reviewers? I think it was six. Six reviewers. Maybe, maybe as many as 10. I think that fluctuated through the project. So this is the time to value discussion with IDP. Correct. Right? And mileage may vary, right? But that was a good use case. And it was a good example of what the technology can do. Yeah. You know? And I think the hard part was getting to figuring out the right technology. With IDP, you can pick the wrong technology. You can you absolutely can. We have, <laughs> you know. Well, that's why I've got an industry expert here with me today right, to talk about. It. Right. We don't, I, wanna, we don't wanna do that. Right, exactly. So learn from my mistakes, yeah. right? But, but it, I think it was really key. I mean, there are many different ROI values when we're looking at IDP, right? It's, first off, you need something done, 
Yep. We got it done. We get done as fast as we could. I know everyone always wants it done faster. Yep. But there is really a technology speed that you can run it. Yep. And then, you know, if there is a day forward, you're built. This was back from. Yep. So we're done. There's also the ROI value to cost. How much do you want developed? How many people do you want? What kind of confidence rating? I yep. heard you talking about that as well, right? Yep. In most IDP cases that we're seeing, which ROI is driving the conversation? Probably the time, I would say. Yeah. And, and the reason I'm asking that question is because right now we're seeing a lot more requests for clean up my data, give me more data. Yeah, and the important thing to consider in that is, you know, the part before we even got started was still a six month process for our client to define what they wanted. And that's something that you've got to keep in mind too. We can move fast, but you don't want to run around with a shotgun where you're not sure what you're, what you're shooting at, right? Yeah. And being the very first episode of Second on Tap, I think you're going to start to see a trend. Discovery is key. It is. To any project. If you want to get it done timely and you want to get it done right, investing time up front is key. Be specific. And it is going to slow us down to kick off, right? Yep. Everyone's going to want to kick off and they're going to want to see change and they're going to want to see um, that th thermometer just fill up until you get to the end of that project. But the reality is if you don't get it right the first time, you're slowing down the whole way. Yeah, you're building a manufacturing line. If you spec it out for the wrong spec, it's going to spit out garbage and you're going to be mad. I guess, you know, wrapping it up here, if, if there's anything you could get going into an ID pre project to make it a little bit better, what would you ask for from any kind of SME, any business partner that you're working with? What could get us too good fast? The details, like what are the results look like and what are the examples of the content that we're using to set this thing up? Yeah. Right, you'd be amazed at how often we don't get examples that match what they're trying to do. And we find out in production. So if you want a successful IDP project, spend that time up front. I know it might be painful, but it's gonna yield a better result in the end. All right, so. Kind of coming to a conclusion here today. I'm hearing two things, come with high volume samples that are going to be like what we're going to use. And I also hear that come with the requirements of the MVP. What's the minimal viable product you need outputting from your IDP? To right. And, and, and what are the, what are the stakeholders need outside of just you and your business? Right. So making sure you're doing your due diligence before we start or we start over. Right. And, you know, looking at what we talked about today, you know, we did talk about a little bit of what IDP is. It's a mashup of a lot of different technologies from over the years to get the outcomes we're looking for. You know, we did get to talk about a use case, which was time to value. It was an awesome use case. Mike, I love that one. When you start to talk about speed, that's the story, right? Mm -hmm. So six months, 25 people, 3%, five to six months, six people, technology, 97%. That's very lopsided. It tells you where we're going. Yep. Uh, today we also got to review beer from Decor, Iowa, the very first one for Tech on Tap that I selected. Thought it was a pretty good beer. And Mike Decker from Colorado coming up here to visit us in Minnesota. Thank you. Thanks.